Welcome to Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. I'm here with Blue Beatrice. We're at the YouTube uh, Creators Festival here in Accra, Ghana. And I tell you, I can't wait to talk to her because she's going to share. I'm shy. No, no, you're not shy at all. Is it, is it? I'm shy, please. See, here she is. There's no such thing as shy. Oh my God. So, so all right, so now this is, this is really cool because we're in Ghana, but you're actually from Nigeria. Um, mm -hmm. So you are Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. A proud Nigerian. Proud Nigerian. Proud. <laughs> so why are you in Accra, Ghana? Okay, um, actually I schooled here. Okay. And um, the country was cool, it was okay. So I went back and I came back. I'm like, okay, I think I can live here and everything. So I now live here because I love it. So you live in Ghana? Yes, please. What are some, some things that people think about Nigerians that are not true? Okay, um, they, most people, I would say everyone, most people, like 90% of the whole world think Nigeria, we are bad people. Okay. You understand? That is one, um, when I say misconception people have, and it's not true. Just like we shared in my other videos, guys, okay. um, I'll encourage you to go and check, there's a part, when I say part two of this video, so you understand what I'm talking about. Like you, you said, um, the narrative people have about Africa, it's crazy. Like, if they have this bad narrative about it, you came to Africa, you get to realize that it's not true. Right. So that is what um, Nigerians or Nigeria is facing. Yes, there's one or two things that is going on. Doesn't mean that everyone is the same. I believe people should come to know people for themselves and have that experience with them and rate it and see if it's true. Instead of just generalizing that all Nigerians are the same. We're not the same. We are good. There are good ones out there yes. and there are bad ones. It, this happens to every country. Even in Ghana, here there are bad people and yes. there are good people. So, yeah, so that's it. Have you, since you've been here, what are some of the challenges that you face coming from Nigeria, okay. coming to Ghana? Mm -hmm. Do people know that you're Nigerian or, or do you yeah. or do you hide it? No, I don't hide. I am proud. I told you I'm a proud Nigerian. Yeah, okay. I don't hide. Like Nigerian, there's one thing about Nigerians, we can't even hide because of, we are, I don't know, we are considered loud. <laughs> Maybe the way we are, we, we, we want to be heard. So there's a way I talk, you know, this person is a Nigerian. Ah. For my accent alone, you know, oh, she's Nigerian, you understand? So I cannot hide my identity. That is where I'm from, you understand? So, yeah. So I am not hiding or whatsoever. So one chat, you asked about the challenges, yes. right? So one of it is, when I say is, or what's the language, you understand? Because most Ghanaians, they, they love their language and it's good. And they just assume everyone should know the language. And it's just crazy. I don't know if I say it's crazy. They just assume everyone should like be speaking tree. They'll speak tree for you and expect you to just, especially the drivers. Ah. When you enter into the Uber, they just say, oh, for sure, where are you going to in their language? I'm not like, oh, sorry, um, sorry. He will not speak English because, yeah, you understand. Oh. And also accommodation for Nigeria. I'm speaking for my country. I don't know if it happens to the Americans or whatsoever, but for Nigerians, some people, some landlords or house owners, they don't rent out their houses to Nigerians. I've heard. I've You've heard, heard that. that I've, heard it. I've experienced that. Most most Nigerians we've experienced that. You understand? I feel because of some bad eggs. Yeah, something that, happened. Yeah, yeah. Bad, yeah. Yep. So now because of that, they have this perception about Nigerians that we are like that. All of us we are like that. I mean, come to know people for themselves. I am not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. Just a little bit. Just, just a little. Just, just a touch. Just a touch no, bad. <laughs> yeah, church bad. Right. I am not that bad. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to hype myself or be the. Try to paint myself as an angel. I am not that bad. Okay, try to know people for themselves. Experience people for themselves and judge. You understand? I've had some Ghanaians that. Uh, giving like good reviews about Nigerians that oh I love Nigerians and I'm like wow where, where can I find like your type because it's more like 60 or 70 percent of some Ghanaians have that bad notion about Nigerians. Where do you think that comes from though? What, uh, is it, is okay. it, yeah, where do you think that okay, comes from? Okay, I think it's, it's from the Ghana must go, uh, this is what I think, and someone left a comment on my channel also because of what happened during the, I think 1950, 1850, 1858 or 1853 incident, the Ghana must go incident. I think at the point um, there was hardship in Ghana, so Ghanaians moved to Nigeria. That was like in the 80s and thereabouts. So um, the economy of Nigeria was not too stable. So the the, gov the, the the president chased away unregistered citizens. You understand? Unregistered. Because some Ghanaians came into Nigeria without having like a document or whatsoever. 
so they drove them away and some were killed because they, they had to walk down to oh, Ghana okay. and everything so it was just brutal so they have that thing back in their mind you understand so it's it's really crazy that we i wasn't even born by then i know nothing about the incident our leaders did that thing to them i feel so bad that such a thing happened you understand i am not proud that that thing happened during that time but because of that incident some families were affected mm. you understand maybe it, it will go from generation to generation oh your forefather was killed in nigeria or this this happened during the ghana must go so they, they grew with that mentality and because of that they now have this thing about nigerians like I don't know, you understand? I understand because, you get. well, yeah, because... Well, it doesn't mean that some don't love us, some love us like to the core, but some still have that thing that, oh, we killed their family members. It is not I, I wasn't even there, I don't know nothing. So I don't, why, why are you judging me? Well, you know, that, that's something that I hear a lot from a lot of uh, African Americans yeah. about Africans. There are a lot of people in America yeah. who are angry yeah. with Africa. Okay. Whether it be Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, or wherever, because of what they were told happened in slavery. Yeah, yeah. So they're saying, well, you know, uh, these Africans sold us into slavery. Yeah, yeah. And I reminded them, I said, well, first of all, to my African-American brothers and sisters, first of all, you've never been in slavery. Yeah. And then the people who are alive today didn't do it. Like to your point, yeah. you didn't play a part in what happened to, to, you know, in that whole thing with Ghana and Nigeria, yeah. but then some people hold that against you. So, yeah. so how do you, um, how did you deal with not being able to rent someplace? How, I didn't get a question. How, how did you deal with not being able to get accommodations and rent some place to live? Okay, so um, what I did was that, like I said, I'm a proud Nigerian. I will not come and use like a fake identity to get, no, no, no. So what I did rather was that if I go, I want to get a place to tell me you won't rent for me, I'll just leave. Mm -hmm. I think that that thing was uh, basically for the men, like Nigerian guys. Like they don't rent to Nigerian guys if you're a guy. But now it's not affecting the ladies. I think I shared on my channel how a lady, she's Ghanaian Nigerian. Even a Ghanaian Nigerian was kind of discriminated from her own. Her hmm. dad is Ghanaian. Okay. But because she had the Nigerian blood, you can imagine how tough it is. It's a serious matter. Her dad is Ghanaian. But because she had the Nigerian blood in her, she was being discriminated in her own father's country. And it's, it's really crazy. It, it, might not, um, it might not be some. Someone might see it to be not something relevant, but it might happen to just anybody. Imagine I marry a Ghanaian tomorrow and I give birth to a, a, a Ghanaian Nigerian child right. and the, my husband dies, God forbid. He, he, the child will be treated the same way. But how would they know? How do they know the Because, the, like, the Nigerians, we have, like, we have this energy, this blood where we are outspoken. Cultural. You know, you know okay. when a Nigerian kind of mixed breed, you right. understand? So... Because you have that tiny atom of Nigerian in you, that is it, like, that is it. I'm not saying to own, but some Ghanaians are very good. They still give out their houses to right, some right, Nigeria, right. but most of them, it's, I don't know, I just feel sad. I feel sad because we were not there when all this incident happened, but we are now suffering for So why do you choose to stay in Ghana, if that's the ah, case? And that's a good question. Somebody's like, well, why are we going back to Nigeria? I know, right? <laughs> I kind of, okay, I miss all of that. I got to meet, like, nice people. Ghanaians are very nice people. Yes, they are. Yes, they are nice people. They are very hospitable people. You understand? Apart from that thing, you know, you can't use because of one thing and generalize that all mm. Ghanaians are bad or they okay. are like that. You understand? Ghanaians are nice people. Yeah. You get that is why I'm here because I got to, I came here alone. Okay, I came to be with my sister here because she also schooled here. Okay, my sister left back, but I came back to like stay here okay. and I got to have like a family. I have Ghanaian family here. It's oh, just wow. crazy. Okay, okay. So I love it here. That's why I'm here. For the interim though, I don't know what God is saying, if I'll be here forever or I have to But travel. you know for right now. Yeah, for right now I'm here. I'm uh, here. Charlie with day. <laughs> all right, so today, so let's talk about your channel. What tell us about your YouTube channel okay. and everything that you have going on. Okay, actually, um <laughs> my channel is like it's scattered for now, but the original um, idea for my channel was um, into girl child and women empowerment. Okay. I also share my experiences and people's experiences in Ghana and also I'm a fashion model. I'm a model. Okay. So I just share random like things in my life. I just share them there, you understand? So, you, so the channel has a, a variety of different things going yes. on. Yes. But I think the most thing that is going on there is my experiences in Ghana, other people's experiences in Ghana and my life here in Ghana. Yeah. So that's it basically. You know, I think that what you're doing is an inspiration because for, I, I believe you're bridging the gap because there's so many things that people hear about Nigerians, yeah. so many things that people hear about Ghanaians, but the fact that you're still here yeah. is saying that you haven't given up 
on this culture and the fact that, that you have found a community of people that love you and welcome you says that the Ghanaian yeah. community hasn't given up on you. And, and that's really, when you go back and think about what happened in history, yeah. the whole point of what they were doing back then, the colonizers, was to make sure that, that, that there was separation between yeah. Nigerian, yeah. Ghanaian, Yoruba, Ibu, uh, Ashanti. Anyway, they were trying to make sure that that separation was always there. And you're now here making a life for yourself, building your channel, and showing people that there's something different. Yeah. So that, that's, that's huge. So for you, because um, you threw this question out at me on, on her channel, Go check out her channel, all right? Blue Beatrice, go check Thank it out. You. So she hit me with a question, and so I know the fellas out there watching right now, uh, the fellas are watching, and they're wondering whether or not you're single or available. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm single until I'm married, I'm single. <laughs> well, I, maybe, right, okay. maybe a better question is, are you available? That might be the question. Okay, I am. Um, I put her on the spot. Uh, <laughs> she put me on the spot, so. <laughs> okay, I am. Um, um, I am not available. Ah, <laughs> see, see. <laughs> see, she was like, ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's, available for what? It's, like, it depends. You know what I'm talking about. So are you available for, to go out on dates with men? Are you, or have you, are you, are you, are you spoken for? Do you have a male friend? Ah, I, I don't know. It's, it's. It's, it's crazy, like, oh boy. dealing with men is crazy, like, I don't know, like, you know, I, I just, <laughs> what is that like? You know, now, now inquiring minds want to know, what is that like for a lady in Ghana, as far as dating, relationships, what is that like? Uh, I think it's, it's really crazy. I'm not saying there's no true love, there's love in Africa, there's love in Ghana, but right now it's really crazy. I am on that part of always encouraging people to get into a relationship early, you understand? It's not when you are big out there, you okay. start finding someone, because some people you don't know if they're there because they really love you, okay. or they're there because they're just after something and everything. After something. You understand? Right, 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 right. <laughs> Chop the right. I'm, I'm quick with it, I'm quick with it. You know. yeah. Yes. So it, it's really crazy here, like relationship, but like I said, no, I said there's no good relationship out there. And I'm um, this person, whenever I see people in relationship, I'm like, I keep admiring people. Even my friends say, oh, you're going to a relationship. I'm like, hey, calm down. Calm. So, so you're in a relationship now? No, no, no. I keep admiring see, see, people. See I kept coming back around. <laughs> I'm quick with it, I'll tell you. So keep, no, she's I keep, not. I keep admiring people. So fellas. People. I, I keep admiring people like, oh, please go into a relationship and everything, but me, I'm taking my time. So you're minding your business. You're I'm drinking your water and minding your business. That's what she's doing. And the reason why I ask that is because some people actually come to Ghana or any different parts of Africa yeah. looking for love. Okay. And um, and so your perspective is you're just waiting for it to come your way. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. And do you on your channel do you talk about relationships? Ah, uh, a little no? bit. No, no, no. I do a little bit, a little bit because I like to try things. I like to try things out. I like to experiment things. So yeah, but not. I don't. That is not the focus of my channel. But got it. Some one or two times we try and talk about some issues and stuff like that. So, so if you were to talk about the focus of your channel, what would you say it is? Okay. Um. Well, I think I think I was discussing that with you today. At the end. <laughs> okay. So the purpose of my channel. It's not just for um, fun. I mean, my channel is supposed to be very, give you this information about whatever thing you want to know about Africa, about life in general and stuff like that. Yes, it's a little bit more of educational. It's more of educational information and entertainment. I mean, I mean. All right, so all of the above. All play mixed jacks or doll boy. So you have to like <laughs> mix it and blend it and stuff like that. So they can find you at Blue Beatrice, right? Mm -hmm. Blue I'm Beatrice. one and only Blue Beatrice. In there's the only one in the world. One and only. Blue Beatrice. There's no, there's no counterfeits. I'm the only one. And then there's Ama, that's Ghanaian. And then it's Inimitsit. Oh, oh, you remember? You're too smart. <laughs> See, that's the Nigerian <laughs> side. <laughs> well, in closing, anything that you want to share with everybody, you know, just some words of inspiration, just something that comes from your heart. Okay, um, what I want to say is that I believe um, it's good to hear things and another thing is for you to experience that thing for yourself. I'm not saying you have to die for you to experience that there's death, you understand? But always keep an open mind, like if you are, if you are coming to like experience someone or know somebody, 
don't just put the, this bad notion in your at the at the front that okay this person is bad. Like I'm talking about the Nigerian incident. Mm. Don't just generalize that all Nigerians were bad. No, there are good ones out there. In as much there are crazy ones out there, there are there are good ones out there. Just keep an open mind, and I mean you enjoy the person, you mm -hmm. your, your experience with the person. Right. But if you are just waiting to see the bad thing that will come out from the person, you see it. You understand. So yeah. And another one is that please try and come to Africa to experience Africa. Africa is beautiful. Africa is. I'm not even hyping it. I'm not. It's, no, you're not. You can it. see it for yourself. Like yeah. you see, one thing is for creators to tell you how Africa is, and another thing is for you to come and see for yourself. He has come to Africa to see for himself I've and seen. that is it, you understand? I don't think um, you can pay someone to tell you the experience. Maybe someone had a bad experience, you now pay someone to tell you like it's a good experience. I won't even do that. It doesn't mm. make sense. Imagine imagine an incident where you were almost killed yes. and they're now bribing to say that you were it was okay. No, you don't do that. No. I don't know, some people saw their conscience, but I'm not like that. Try and experience Africa for yourself and you'll never regret it. Yeah. Well, you heard it from the one and only Blue Beatrice. She's here on Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. Make sure you check out her channel, Blue Beatrice, and Achibon. follow up uh, Achibon. Okay. Blue Beatrice Achibon. Achibon. And check out all of the different uh, videos and vlogs and everything on her channel. Be sure to subscribe to her channel and just learn. You know, again, this is how we bridge the gap, hearing and learning from each other's stories. And I'm committed to doing that and introducing you to new faces, fun faces. And uh, so in the meantime, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share. And until next time, take care. Be safe. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora, as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa. And they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.